I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold him, and not another. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, let me know my end and the number of my days that I may be certified how long I have to live. Behold, thou hast made my days as it were a span long, and my age is even as nothing in respect of thee. And verily, every man living is altogether vanity. For a man walketh in a vain shadow, and disquieteth himself in vain. He heapeth up witches, and cannot tell who shall gather them. Hear my prayer, Lord, and with thine ears consider my calling. Hold not thy peace at my tears. Blessed good evening and welcome to all to the Power in the Blood Assembly. We're here this evening to give God thanks for the life of our departed sister, Agnes Victoria Dawson. And as we begin this service of thanksgiving, let us bow our heads and give God thanks for her life. Heavenly Father, we thank you that today we can come into your presence to thank you for the privilege of knowing Agnes and sharing life with her. It has pleased you to call her home to yourself. And we ask this evening that your comfort will be experienced by all who grieve her parting. We pray especially for her mom and her close relatives. And Father, as we celebrate her life today, I pray that the anointing of your presence will be among us. And the things we say and do here will reflect the life that she lived, a life of service to you. So be pleased to glorify yourself in us as we give you all the honor, the glory, the praise, and thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us continue by saying the hymn, How Great Thou Art, as our sister Pat comes to lead us in that hymn.
Savior, Lord, to thee, how great thou art. Even when things aren't going the way we like, he's still great. And we still need to give him his praise. Hallelujah. We're going to have a first lesson read by Richardson Moore. And it's taken from St. Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 through 30. How great thou art. Hallelujah. Yes, hello, good afternoon. Which reading is from St. Matthew 11, chapter 11, verse 25 to 30, and it reads as follows. And that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he too, whosoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. There and if we leave the scripture. Praise the Hallelujah. Lord. You may sit in the presence of the Lord as today. Again, I welcome you, those of you who have come in a little later. Welcome to Point the Blood Assembly. On behalf of the leadership of this thing, this church, we do express our sincere condolences to the Moore family and all the friends and well wishers of our dear sister Agnes. As we continue this service of Thanksgiving, we have another hymn. Lily of the Valley, followed by our second scripture, read by Lynette Abraham. If you're comfortable to stand, we can stand and do the song. If not, you're welcome to remain seated. But Lily of the Valley, remember that we're celebrating a life, so feel free to worship as we celebrate this evening.
lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. May God Hallelujah. add his blessings to the reading. Praise God. The Lord shall preserve our souls. Lift our eyes to the hills. From whence come our help. You may be seated in the presence. We're now going to have tribute and poem by Marvel Little. Followed by the eulogy by Theresa Ward. And then a solo by our very own Deaconess Pat. Before I come back to you. Just follow the program. Thank you. Hey, good afternoon to the church. As quoted by author B.J. Nablet, we are the sum total of our experiences, and those experiences, be they positive or negative, make us the persons we are at any given time in our lives. Ecclesiastes 7 reminds us that the end of a thing is better than its beginning, and the day of death better than the day of one's birth. If we consider both statements, it would insinuate that for the end of our lives to be better than the beginning, then the sum total of our experiences will have to be lived in a manner that leads to that better ending. So this tribute today is really to encourage us to live the better ending in mind. I therefore chose the poem, The Dash, as a tribute because it is forever applicable. And when I think of Aggie, I am convinced that her mission was to ensure that in accordance with Ecclesiastes 7, her ending would be better than her beginning. Now we know the experiences of Agnes's life captured in the dash between her beginning and ending years. It included, among others, being a daughter, a sister, an auntie, niece, cousin, godmother, friend, workmate, classmate, neighbor, but ultimately, child of God. And each of us will remember her fondly for different reasons based on our interactions. For me, I will remember many things about Agni, but today, I'll highlight two. She loved the Lord, and she lived her life completely sold out for him. When I think of her walk with God, it reminds me of a stanza of my old Sunday school motto, which says, our Sunday school motto says, our Sunday school must grow and grow, and I must help to make it so. Rain our sun, mud our dust, come to Sunday school I must. I think, for have, for, however, for Aggie, it was rain or sun, mud or dust, to be found in the house and presence of the Lord, I must. Nothing kept her away. No sickness, no pain. Nothing successfully competed. Two, I will not be able to remember Aggie and not hear her laugh. I don't think there was ever a time I was in her presence and not ready with an, Auntie, how are you? Followed by a smile and just a sunny, joyful radiance. But then, considering what I said before, that should come as no surprise, as we are also told in Psalm 1611 that in thy presence, God, is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. And she practiced being in the presence of God, no matter the circumstance. That's how she spent her dash. The poem, The Dash, by Linda Ellis. I read of a man who stood to speak at a funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on the tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted first came the date of the birth and spoke and spoke the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between the years. For that dash represents all the time that they spent life on earth. And now only those who love them know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live our lives and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that can still be rearranged. If we could just slow down a bit to consider what's true and real, and always try to understand the way other people feel. Be less quick to anger and show appreciation more. 
and love the people in our lives like we have never loved before. And treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about you and how you spent your dash? Agnes Victoria Dalson, August 16, 1969, dash, July 30th, 2022. We can be comforted by the knowledge that Aggie's ending is better than her beginning because she lived her dash for Christ, all sold out. How about you? How are you spending your dash? Are there things that we all can rearrange? Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone, and um, thanks to Marvel for that lovely tribute. It says so much about the dash. Um, yes. Agnes was born on August 16, 1969, to Veronica Moore, Nia Dalson, and Richard Moore. She was the middle child to her elder sibling, Richardson, and her younger sister, Teresa. Agnes grew up in Wavell Avenue and attended Miss, Be Miss Beckles Kindergarten, St. Stephen's Primary and Junior School, and the St. Leonard's Girls School, where she completed her education. At a very young age, we were introduced to church at the Bethel Evangelical Church on Grisette's Main Road by the late Sister Myrtle Barker, who approached my mom one day and told her that she should send the children to Sunday school. My mom sent along my brother first, and I guess that was to test the waters. And a few months later, my sister and I followed. Agnes delighted in all things associated with the church. Under the tutelage of the late Sister Barker, my sister blossomed in her love of reciting poems at the church's various events and church skates, in which persons attended would be in stitches with her role, role play. She also sang in the church's youth choir, which was under the tutelage of the late Brother King. Around the age of 18, my sister got baptized and became a member of the church. Agidi also loved art and craft and was very good and creative with her hands in creating all types of, of um, items which she would at times place for sale. Only yesterday, someone was saying they still have something that my sister had sold them or given to her uh, numerous years ago. Agnes was a fashionista, and oftentimes in our younger days, when we stepped out of my parents' house in a new creation, whether it was church or pleasure, it was compliments of my sister who designed what we were wearing. I was always happy to wear whatever she, whatever she designed, cause we did always look good. Those who knew Agnes knew that she loved to dress up. And when she did, she made sure she had the accessories to go with everything she wore. Persons who remember Agnes remember her for her beautiful smile and her warm, pleasant, and engaging personality. In fact, people say her smile reached you before her body did. Most of the time, and she always seems so happy to see you, which would put you in a good mood even if you were not. My sister being angry was a rare thing, even when you were angry with her. She would easily put you on ignore until your anger passed and you calmed down. My mom can attest to that fact. For my parents, Agnes was a tower of strength to them. She loved going on picnics and would accompany my parents around several excursion sites around the island where she would eat and drink her belly full. When our father got sick, she assisted my mom ultimately in taking care of him until his passing early last year. After our father's passing, Agnes became even more of a companion to our mom and would often accompany her on her various outings as our mom fully undertook on the role of homeowner. She also made sure that our mother was dressed proper when going out 
and would not let her leave home unless she was satisfied that that was the case. She was also a comforter to our mom and encouraged her in her faith to be strong in the things that life often sends our way, whether we wish them or not. Our mom will sorely miss Aggie D and constantly says this to me when I speak to her on a daily basis. For my brother, Richardson, Agnes was a friend, a confidant, and a soother of his soul whenever he was feeling trouble, which was a number of times. To say they were close is to put it mildly. They had a special bond, and my sister's passing has been a constant source of grief for him. I know he will dearly miss her. My brother, whoever, my brother, whoever, recounted to me a funny situation in which he and my sister were in St. Lucia, and a gentleman suddenly approached them out of the blue, claiming he was a prophet, and said that God told him to marry, to, to tell my brother to marry the woman beside him, that she is a good woman. <laughs> my brother said he let a man know in no uncertain terms that the woman next to him was his sister, at which time the man became quiet as a church mouse. This goes to show we have to be very careful who we take advice from. For me, my memories of my sister will be fond ones. Growing up with IGD, there were a few dull moments. We loved playing and exploring, and we'd be all through Black Rock running about with your friends, especially during summer vacations. And some of our friends are here today, and I'm thankful. We also spent a, lot, a few of those holidays in the pine with my uncles and aunts, being taught all kinds of things. <laughs> While my sister was no saint, and we got up to our share of mischief, she would be the one to pull back on most occasions and keep us in check. I wasn't always happy about it, <laughs> but today I look back and realize how much of an impact my sister has had on my life. I tell the story of my sister when we were attending the St. Stephen's Primary School. We were, we were about eight and nine, respectively. Now, we were accustomed to going through a trap with our friends, going to and from school on a regular basis. For some reason, one evening, out of the blue, my sister decided to tell my mother about this trap. And my mother, being who she is, said, I don't want one of going through that trap no more. Walk the straight road. Well, the next day, we get to the trap with our friends, and I they're ready to go. And my sister said, my mommy say we can't go through that trap with one of no more. We got to walk the straight road. Well, I got to tell you, I just so vexed with my sister, because I telling myself, well, my mother ain't here, and what she ain't know can't kill she. But my sister, who was an obedient child, did what my mother said. Uh, of course, I had no choice but to follow, because if my mother was told otherwise afterwards that I disobeyed, it would be licks in my tail. So we walked the straight road, and when we got to the other side, we saw all our friends standing by the road bawling. When we ran up to them to find out what had happened, they said a big dog had run them through the track. That dog had ripped one of our friends' school bags to shreds. Now, if you didn't know me back then, you would know that I was prone to falling whenever I run. So it was no rocket science for me to know that if I had gone through that trap that evening, I may not have made it out to the other side. I thank God for my sister, and I thank God for obedient sisters. There were many other occasions in my life where my sister was the voice of reason. And I listened to her, but not always, because you know that's how life is. I love when my sister prayed for me. I always felt that her prayers went up to heaven. Praise the Lord. At some point in her life, after worshiping at several different churches, Agnes joined the Saving the Lost at Any Cost and Time Ministries International and was a faithful member there until her passing. I am sure her church, her church family will miss her dearly. Agnes believed with all her heart in the rapture. And it was clear that she did not want to spend a minute longer on this earth than she had to. 
There's a song that goes, good things to come, always good things to come. We look for them, we pray for them all the way home. Agnes had a longing for those good things that were promised in the heavenly realm. Agnes passed away at the age of 52, two weeks before her birthday. But God is good always, and I thank him for having her in my life as my big sister. She was my one and only. Your smiling face, Agnes, laughing nature in spite of all you endured is priceless. Gone, but never forgotten. There's only one of you. Two days ago, Agnes celebrated her 53rd birthday in heaven with the angels. And I'm sure that while she misses us, she has no regrets. So while I am sad and will shed some tears from time to time, I am also rejoicing and at peace in my heart because Aggie D is finally at peace in the loving arms of her heavenly father and creator God. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So today we are here only for the body. Her soul has already departed. And this is our blessed hope. And this is what gives me comfort on those difficult days and keep me from despair. Amen. I believe in all my heart that Agnes will be greeted by her Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with the words, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have fought the fight. You have run the race. You have finished the course. You have kept the faith. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. Sleep in peace, my beloved sister Agni. Until that fateful day when the trumpet shall sound and the Lord shall descend and you will rise in glory and be caught up in the air to meet your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What a day of rejoicing that shall be. Be at peace and be at rest. It is well with your soul. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, verse 16, amen. God bless you all.
Savior Jesus Christ, I can only imagine what party we will have up there with our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. And that is why as we live here, we could lift our hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Because his eyes are on the sparrow. And I'm quite sure he watches over us. The Bible said, his eye run through and fro, beholding the good and evil. So my daddy don't miss a thing. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven? When Jesus, he is my portion, my constant friend is he, his eyes on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. His eyes on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. You see, I sing because I'm happy. Yes, and I sing because I'm free. Oh, his eyes, they're on the sparrow. your heart be troubled his tail and resting on his goodness yes I lose my doubts and my fears Go by the path he leadeth, but one step I may see that his eyes there on the sparrow. Jesus watches over me. Yes, God I is on the sparrow. And I tell you, I know he watching over us. That's why I say. Sing, be 
His eye is on the sparrow and he's watching over me and he's watching over you. He's concerned about every little thing about us. And those of us who have learned how to trust him, we can have hope in him. Again, I say good evening and to any who have joined us late and if there are any ministers in the house, if Sister Agnes Pastor is in the house, I welcome you. And we, again, I extend sympathy on behalf of the leadership of this house. I believe God wants to say something to us this evening. Because as I was preparing, the, the theme I want to speak to us about this evening is redeeming the time. In Ephesians chapter 5, between verses 15 to 17, we read, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Father, we thank you for all you have done already in this service for the testimony of the life of my sister. And we are believing you now, God, for these few moments to give revelation, knowledge of your truth. Confirm things for us who already know. Answer questions for those who have doubt. And we are believing you that when we have come to the end of this service, we will be challenged to walk as wise men and women in this earth according to your wisdom, and for this we give you thanks, in Jesus' name, amen. Redeeming the time. We are reminded as we give God thanks for our sisters, 52 years on the earth, that God himself, sovereign God, determines the times and the seasons. 
And in Ecclesiastes, we are told there's a time to be born and there's a time to die. But he has given us the freedom to choose how we will use that time between birth and death. And I came to say, as the poet says, the dash. And you will recognize that God has already challenged us about how we use that dash. It is the way we use that dash that will determine what happens after this. For the Bible tells us that there's appointed unto man once to die, but after death, there's a judgment. So here we have the Apostle Paul. He's challenging the church at Ephesus, and I am challenging us this evening to use every opportunity that presents itself to you between your birth date and your date of departure to give God glory and honor. See that you walk circumspectly, redeeming the time because the days are evil. See that you manage your dash well. So what is the Apostle Paul saying to us? I am suggesting to us today that he is encouraging us to walk wisely. Not according to man's wisdom, because man's wisdom is foolishness. But according to the wisdom of God. If we follow the dictates of the world system, we will always go contrary to God's standards. So he is challenging the church, and I am challenging us this evening to walk wisely, walk being fully aware of God's expectation of us in the earth. Walk cautiously, be careful for nothing. Walk consciously that how you live your life now is going to impact your hereafter. Because there is a hereafter. This is not the end. This is a transition from this life to another. Hallelujah. The, the psalmist David said, teach me to number my days that I may apply my heart to wisdom, that I will use my days wisely. If we all knew, I am sure we, we know that our sister tried to live her life to, pray, to bless the Lord, but still if you knew that tomorrow was your last, you will go, you will pull out all the stops, eh, to fix it, anything, any little unforgiveness, any little trace, anything that you could think about, you will try to fix it. But this is the thing about life. That is a certain thing, but it's still uncertain. We all know that this day will come, but we don't know when. And so we are being encouraged to use our dash wisely. Being careful about the choices we make in life. Being conscious and fully aware that only what we do for Christ will last. Hallelujah. Make time for God. Make time for the things of God. Because it is the only way we are going to find rest in this life and the hereafter. The scripture that was chosen this evening spoke about, Come unto me and I will give you rest. And the Apostle Paul wants them to know life is, there's a brevity of life. Life is short. Even if we live to 70 or 70 something, it's still short. And we need really to trust God, trust God in these seasons when things are changing all around us and changing fast. And don't waste a moment. When I first met Agnes, I met a young woman who was extremely passionate for God. She was so passionate that, and she was determined that she needed to get as close to God and as much of God as possible. To the point that she probably, you would say, took some extreme measures and taking a longer fast that we would encourage people to do. And that began to have some effect on her. But dealing with that situation, I was more convinced that we have a God who does not forget his own. And we have a God who knows the intent and the purpose of a man's heart. 
So he knew that she was about show business. He knew she wasn't trying to prove that she could do something. She was actually going after him with a passion that she wanted more. And so he came through. He touched, she delivered, and gave her the victory that she could continue the rest of her life giving him service. And out of that, I got to know her mom, who eventually gave her life to God, got water baptized, and became a member of this church. Tell me that my God don't know how to do things. He would take the foolish things of this life and do good with it. We serve a great God. We cannot begin to reason or try to, to explain him. We just have to understand that he is God. He does all things well. He knows all things. And he knows how to take what the devil meant for evil and turn it around for good. So Agnes was delivered, was set free, was, was able to move on with her Christian walk. Her mother came into faith. Her father came into faith. And God had a family. Hallelujah. So I, I, I celebrate this evening because I know that she loved the Lord and that God loved her back. Well, he loved her first but because he, God so loved us that we love him. But yes, there was a love relationship between God and this young woman. And so I give God praise for having met her. She never became a member of this assembly, but we may remain in good relationship. And I, some of the things I wrote down here, I heard in the eulogy. I found she had a sweetheart, a ready smile. Regardless of when I met her, we asked how long it was that we didn't meet. It was as if we were chatting yesterday. It was that welcome smile, that laughter, pass the low, and we had a good time. And so she always had a good disposition. Even if she was saying, well, you foot this or something, it wasn't a complaining, like a murmuring, angry vets, nothing. It was just stating a fact. But she had a smile. She had a joy in her heart. And where does that come from? It comes because you establish a relationship with the great I am. It comes when you know that you're living your life to please him and that he is living in you and you are at rest with him. So when we talk about having rest, we're not talking about rest in this state. We're talking about living in this life in a world full of trouble, full of situations that are tormenting and frustrating, but still being at peace because of whose you are and because of who is living on the inside of you, because of the relationship you have established with him and the fact that though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and staff comfort me. Walking through with a peace that he is not going to let me go through more than I am able to handle. Walking through with a peace that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. Walking through with a peace that says, in all things give God thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning me. You can't do that if you have not taken time to consider how you are using your dash. If you are living your dash carefree like the drunk man, you ever see a drunken man walking the street? No concern. He can't even cons be concerned if he truck a truck right there. He just swing with the wind. And some of us live like that. We have no purpose. We have no focus. We just live in. But that is not why God created us. That is not why he put us on the earth. He has a path already chosen for us. He has a purpose for us in the earth. But he does not force it on us. He wants us to choose to give him a chance to show us where he wants to take us, to lead us in the right way so that he can bring glory to his name. The, the same Psalm 23 says, he leads me in the path of righteousness. May he leads me to do the right thing. Why? For his name's sake. It's not only about us, but it's about we, his creation, bringing back glory and honor to him. So my challenge this evening for us is redeem the time. As we give him thank for Sister Agnes, and yes, mommy, sister, brother, cousins, there will be that void. We will feel the loss. I've walked this road so I understand what it is. We are human. But when we know that our beloved had a relationship with God, it eases that pain. 
because there's a comfort in knowing that she is in the arms of sweet deliverance. There's a comfort in knowing that she's at peace with her maker. Amen? And so though we mourn, we do not grieve as those who have no hope. But we operate with a hope that says God has it and he will keep me and he will bring me through this. So take time this evening to reflect on your own mortality. Take time to reflect on you. How am I living my dash? Is God getting any honor out of it? Am I worshiping him the way he deserves? Am I committing myself to his service? Because remember, as we lift our dash, we are supposed to give God worship. We are supposed to serve, work in his kingdom. We are supposed to live lives that will be exemplary and, and be guide for those coming behind us. I was pleased to hear our sister in the eulogy could speak of, I don't remember if she said Sister Barker, but a lady who was so focused on how she lived her dash and how she could impact others that even when mommy wasn't coming to church, she said, send these children. I will take them. I will expose them to truth. Do we have any of those mothers still around? I am a testimony of that too. I remember in the season when my mother wasn't going to church, but the mothers in the district carry you along to Sunday school, carry you along to choir practice, and you're involved in everything in the church and your mother home. Hello? Because another mother who appreciated what the love of God can do in the life of a child took the time took the time to live her dash, not selfishly, but to impact somebody else. And today we can testify that Agnes knew her God and walked in the path of righteousness. Teresa is saying the same thing because a sister took the time out to invest. Are we still investing in the children in our communities? This wasn't in my text, but God wants us to understand. We can cry every day about the guns. We can cry every day about the violence. We can cry every day about the wickedness in the earth. And if the church does not rise up, and not just preach from here, but touch a life, live your dash not for you, but for the doors around you, we will continue to be talking about gun violence. Where are the mothers of Zion? Do I have any in this house? that will still come back to that place and look for that child, that boy, that girl. Because I know, I know that we are in a place now where we are afraid of them. Because if we start to tell them, don't do that, they start to give you a bad word or something like that, and we want to step back. I know, I, I understand, I pass it too, I, I, I experience it. But we still have to persevere. And that is why I say God has given us the power and so before we approach them prayer, ask God to make their hearts receptive. Ask God to give you the right word to say and, and ask him to help you to demonstrate genuine interest and love. It is not about talking at them, but it's about showing them that you care. I am sure they felt that that sister cared for them. And that's why they could lovingly and willingly and gladly go along with her Sunday after Sunday until they came to a place where they experienced their personal relationship and was able to take responsibility for their dash. The challenge today, redeem the time. Think about time. You don't have it in control. You can't determine when your dash is going to come to an end. But while we have it, while we are alive, while our eyes are open, while we have our ability, my challenge is do what God wants you to do. Make a decision to serve the Lord God and walk in obedience to his will. We have Job in the Bible. Living in a time of personal trouble. The devil taking away his family. Get to a point he oppressed his own body. And Job is saying in chapter 14, a man that is born of a woman... Is of a few days and full of trouble. Reality. 
the, 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 the role of man and suffer the, the frailties of mankind so that I can have an opportunity to be brought back to God. They bridge a gap that I can get back to God and I give him praise this evening because I can testify that because somebody cared about taking me to church, Jesus met me and this evening I can still stand here years down the road to say that I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. Hallelujah. You ask me why I shout. Ask me how I know he lives. He lives with Hallelujah. So Job said a man that's born of a woman has a, a few days and is full of trouble. It is short compared to eternity. But how we use the days are important because he says service to God. He is aware that at the end of all this, there is coming a time where we will live again. So he asked the question, fully aware, will, if a man die or shall a man die, will he live again? And he knew that there is a resurrection coming. My Bible tells me, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout in the voice of the, and the trump of God and the dead in Christ. People who went down like Agnes will rise first. And if he comes and some of us who are serving him and worshiping him are still alive, we're going to be caught up to meet him forever to be with the Lord. And so comfort one another with these words this evening. Comfort each other with the fact that we serve a God who will not forsake us. Who Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place. I'm going to come and receive you to myself. I leave you here on the earth with a time to do some work for me. I've given you an opportunity to serve me, to worship me, and to work for me by touching other lives. Use your dash wisely that when we get to the end, we will be able to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. So I close by encouraging all of you who hear me today, take comfort. Why? Because you have the Prince of Peace living on the inside of you. And so if you are here this evening and you have not started the journey that Agnes started, I ask you, please, take the opportunity to ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and to order your steps and use the rest of the time that you have on this earth until he calls you that he calls Sister Agnes to bring glory and praise and honor unto his name. That is the best decision you can make to give God a chance to turn your life around, fill you with the presence of his Holy Spirit and order your steps. So please redeem the time, meaning take careful thought of how you use your dash. Many of us are a good way past the birthday. And we don't know the closing. We hear nowadays that it is no longer 70, it is 70 something and whatever, but this is man's computation. Only God knows. But how I use what he has given me is going to be important. I will thereafter. So to the family. Take comfort in knowing that she made her peace with God. And just as you said in your eulogy, she is at peace with him. She's having her eternal rest from her labors, from her sickness and her pain. And though we grieve her loss, we understand that God knows best. And so we trust him in Jesus' name. If you will just stand with me, the immediate family in the house, just stand as we... Ask those of you who are believing people in the power of prayer, just point your hand towards them as we pray for them. Immediate family, just stand. And everybody else who understands the power of prayer, just, just reach that, right, that hand over to them and come in agreement as we cover them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, this evening, we thank you. We thank you that you didn't send it by me, but you sent it ahead of me to challenge us to use the dash wisely. God, I believe that you wanted to talk to somebody today about the way they're living their lives. 
I pray in the name of Jesus that as you, through your spirit, touch that heart and give revelation knowledge, that that person or persons would yield and would say, yes, Lord, come into my life, make me your child. And I will use the rest of my dash wisely until you call me home. Let angels minister to these hearts today, God. And I pray especially for family members right now who will be having that empty space in their hearts that Agnes will fill. I pray, God, that the memories, the fond memories of her will continue to bring them joy. The fond memories of her will contribute to their peace as they rely on you, O oh God, to embrace them with your love and to embrace them with your comfort. I thank you that we can present you to them this evening as the God who comforts. And as Jesus was leaving, he said, My peace I give to you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Grant them your peace in this season. And we say thank you for doing it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Would everybody just stand as we join them in singing a new name written down in glory. We're going to do like two verses, then I will do the benediction, and then we will have the recession with that. Father, we thank you for this time we have spent in your presence. We thank you for the peace that you have settled in our spirits. We commend the soul of our departed sister to you. And as we would leave this house to journey to a resting place for her earthly tabernacle, we pray for the protection and the journey in mercy. And I want to him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence. Hallelujah. With exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Let us continue to sing as we have the recession.
Francis Ford. Yeah.